Are we already recording? Yeah, we're recording. Okay. Hi, everyone. Again, um, my name is Cole, and if you are on Twitters, I go by Cold vs. Code. Um, I'm also often the man behind Formspree, uh, at Formspree on Twitter. And then also, if you are uh, fortunate enough to have to write in a support request to Formspree, uh, you, you have a good chance of listening, of connecting with me there. Um, before I go into more detail about myself and my backstory, I want to do a little interactive thing. So we're actually going to do a Mad Lib as a group. It's fun, right? It's a game. It's like a word game. Uh, and if you've never done a Mad Lib before, don't worry. I will show you how to do it right now. So all I need is I need these words, starting with adjective. Can I get someone just to shout an adjective out in the crowd? Dastardly. Okay, I like it. I like it. That, that's a good word. Um, so we got dastardly. Okay, number from negative one million to positive one million. Zero. <laughs> All right. Um, how about geographical location? Anywhere, anywhere on the planet or the solar system? Is it still considered geographical if it's like? in the middle of space. I got a Mars, I heard a Mars. All right, let's do it. Mars, uh, exclamation, that's like something that you would shout um, in the heat of passion, woo. All right, woo, woo, woo. Uh, number, I need another number. Uh, you know, real numbers are okay, don't have to be whole numbers. Seven, got it. Um, adjective. Any adjective. I'm going to need two more adjectives, people. So let's do this. Inconsiderate. Inconsiderate. Jam. Jamtastic. All right. <laughs> and last thing is a plural noun. A collection of something. Lemurs, all right. Okay, well that was fun. Let's go back to talking about me, because uh, I love talking about myself. Um, so who am I? Well, um, I'm a dastardly American. Uh, I was born zero years ago uh, in, on Mars. Uh, and when my father first saw me, he, he said, woo! Um, I'm seven feet tall, which is not accurate. Uh, I have... <laughs> inconsiderate brown eyes, uh, and a jamtastic complexion, whatever that means, and my hobby is collecting lemurs. Uh, thank you, everyone. I appreciate the help there. Um, let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's get realistic. No more jokes. The rest of this talk is strictly business. Uh, I'm the founder of Formspree.io. It's a very serious company. Um, any Formspree users in the audience? Yes, I love it. Um, so I will have hopefully like 25 forms for users by the end of today, um, which is going to take a lot of work because there's not 25 people in this room. Uh, former product manager at Squarespace. I worked on developer products. Um, I've actually been working on dev products since about 2011. Uh, I've, this is my third startup. Uh, what's forms free? Forms free is a form backend for developers and also designers, pretty much anyone who can write some, some HTML code can use Formspree. Uh, it allows you to send emails uh, or sync to third-party apps like Google Sheets or uh, MailChimp. Uh, anytime somebody clicks submit on a form that you create yourself and put on your website. Um, it's free for the first 50 submissions, unlimited forms, uh, and it's great for Jamstack, or as we used to call them, static sites, uh, or pretty much any any kind of website. In fact, we're getting a lot of people nowadays that are using Shopify and WordPress and other stuff too. Um, so quick plug on Formspree. Um, so let's talk about Mad Libs. That's why we're here. Uh, we just did one. Uh, this is what a Mad Lib is. It's basically a simple game. Uh, you have a paragraph with important words pulled out and you, you have like an audience and the audience fills in those words without the context of what the paragraph's gonna be. And then the moderator goes and like, repeats the paragraph with those random words. Uh, hopefully everyone laughs. That's basically the game. Uh, what's it got to do with form design or, what it, or, or generally technology? Um, well, about 
uh, I'd say about 10 years ago, some people started experimenting with using these, uh, probably a lot more before that, but there was kind of a, a, um, some buzz around using Madlib design for forms. Uh, basically, you're taking this format of the Madlib uh, and you're sort of using it to make it easier for people to fill in forms and maybe make it even a little bit fun. Um, this is an example of the Oscar uh, insurance website, which has a bunch of Mad Libs on it that are used to help you fill in your details when you're applying for insurance. Uh, there are a bunch of other examples. Um, a guy named Jurgen Rolf, Rolf. Anyway, there's a link at the end of the presentation to a, a nice man who has, <laughs> has collected a lot of these examples. Uh, so you can see on his website, uh, kind of just examples of this design pattern, but it's everything from, the top one is from, uh, Kickstarter, they used to have this where they, you'd kind of like fill in this Madlib in order to filter uh, Kickstarter projects. Um, there's an example here of a simple contact form using a Madlib, uh, order form for coffee service, um, et cetera. Um, and people have studied whether they are effective. Uh, there have been a few studies that have shown that they are and some that have shown that they're not as effective. Um, so there was a, there's a site called vast.com. It's like a big car uh, retail uh, online service. And they showed something like 40%, up to 40% uh, conver increased conversion when they replaced their form with a Madlib style form. Uh, another site called prizegrab.com had uh, a test that they ran with about 3,000 visitors and it had 30%, almost 30% uh, improvement in conversion. Uh, and then Patrick McKenzie, also Patio11 on Twitter, uh, he tested it on his site, Bingo Card Creator, and found that it decreased conversion by 20, uh, over 20%. Uh, so let's drill into that a little bit. Um, here is an example of that vast.com test. Uh, you can see on the left side is a pretty standard form that's asking you to fill in some information so that you can be contacted about a car. Uh, and on the right side, uh, that's an example of the Madlib version of the form. So there's a couple interesting things going on here. Uh, one is that you can see a lot more words uh, on the right side. Um, it's actually adding a lot of context to sort of telling the customer what they're sending a message about. So it says, uh, you know, I want to learn more about this 2009 Chevy Silverado. Um, so it sort of provides that additional context. Uh, and it also creates this more sort of conversational tone um, which uh, kind of makes it a little bit more personal uh, and, and adds this like human touch. Um, so that's an example of one that did convert well. And here's the uh, one that Patrick uh, did. Oops, I see that. There you go. Um, so this one, uh, you can see on the left and the right, the, the two different versions. This is actually a registration form uh, and on this one, there, there are more words, um, but in my opinion, I don't think they're adding much more context. So uh, on the left, it's like a registration form. On the right, it says, I want, you know, I want to sign up essentially under this email address, and I'd like to use this word as my password. Um, so, you know, you could argue that there's not really an added amount of context in that form. Uh, in addition, you know, these words like, I want to use this word, word, uh, there's kind of, I would say that it, that it kind of reduces legibility. In fact, you, you sort of have to read that paragraph to figure out that it's just a registration form, right? Um, so reduces legibility, doesn't really add much more valuable context. Perhaps this creates a more conversational interaction, but this is also a pattern that people see a lot, and so it's a little unexpected. Um, so overall, I would say that uh, to be successful, uh, you should be able to do these things if you're trying to use a Madlib form. Uh, you should be able to provide some additional context. Uh, you should be maintaining or increasing the legibility of your form and, uh, and you should be using that additional context to create sort of a, a human touch or to create some more personal connection. Um, so I think if you follow those guidelines, there's a good chance that your form uh, will be able to increase conversion. And obviously there's a lot of studies out there. You can do your own testing, A-B testing on your own site to make sure that that, that is ringing true. Uh, but I think generally speaking, Madlib forms do have the potential uh, 
uh, if you explore and sort of implement them the right way to, to have a big impact on conversion. So let's say you wanna be able to create a form like I do. Uh, I wanted to be able to do this myself. I had this uh, board game club I was setting up uh, and I wanted to try using a Mad Lib form to, to get people to sign up for my board game club. Um, pretty standard form. Uh, this is kind of the sketch of what I wanted to be able to create. Um, very similar to what we saw before. I'm saying, hi, my name is whatever. I like to play. I'm available these days. I prefer to meet at this place. You can see there's kind of a combination here of three text uh, inputs and also select inputs where I would have a set of options to choose from. Uh, so that is kind of the goal. Um, and I wanted, I, I did some research to see if I could find any libraries or tools out there that I could do this without having to sort of build this all from scratch. Uh, and I didn't find much. Um, I found a few examples of uh, libraries that allow you to do just select forms and have sort of like a, a sequence of, of questions. It's kind of a more um, phased form uh, format. Um, but I didn't see something that had, that sort of met the requirements that I was shooting for, uh, which were pretty long. Before I get into it, what, do you have a question? Oh, oh no problem. <laughs> um, so this is the requirements that I had for this, which is, you know, classic Mad Lib style uh, uh, form, which means there's a paragraph of text, there's missing words. I, I was shooting for this underlying blank with the label beneath. I think that's a nice, uh, a nice way of doing it because it the label sort of like instead of using a placeholder or something you can see the label all the time and you can type into it um, i wanted the underlying blank area to be able to fit that label below the line and i wanted that label that that blank uh slot to wrap like any word so if you know you mess with the width of of the paragraph it should break along with the rest of the text and remain in line uh, and on top of that, um, you know, obviously these are inputs, so I should be able to click on it and start typing into that space and see the characters appearing in that space, uh, as opposed to like clicking on it and having a modal or something like that. I just wanted to be able to directly interact with that thing. Uh, and then I wanted to be able to uh, have that blank adjust as I'm typing characters. So if I like get to the end of this blank, it should extend the size of that region as I'm typing characters. And then if I hit a line break, it should actually break and flow to the next line. So I wanted the, uh, I wanted the input essentially to wrap with the text. Um, so that was my goal going in. I thought, hey, shouldn't be too bad. We'll find out. Um, and here are the results. Um, I did not succeed. Uh, this was probably some of the worst JavaScript after four days that I have ever written in my life. And I, and I managed to actually crash Safari with, uh, with my implementation. So it was pretty, it turned out to be a pretty intense project. And, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Um, and then we'll kind of talk about what happened and why this turned out to be a bigger problem, a harder problem than I expected. Um, so let's go ahead and pull up the form, so here's the functioning form. Um, I can click on it, I can say, my name is Cole. Uh, I'm available on, let's say like Mondays, nothing fancy yet, you know, here's a select. Um, I'm into, let's see, what are some board games? I like classic board games. You can see that it's starting to like do the, like Settlers of Catan, so it did a word wrap there. And occasionally I like a game of Monopoly, yada, 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 yada. So you're getting multiple, multiple line wraps as well. Um, so that's, that's the form. Looks great, right? Seems like it's working. Uh, but then there's all sorts of little things that turned out to be hard. Like if I say Mondays and two, uh, you'll notice that I didn't get that that wrap quite right. There's kind of like a period there where my wrap is messed up. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about the problems that I ran into here. Um, I'll full screen this again. 
So first of all, the implementation, uh, you can go, this is all on GitLab uh, under this project called Board Games under Culver's Code. So here's just a, the code for the form itself. Um, you can see that it's using this stretchy input that's like a React component that I created, which handles uh, the interesting inputs. The uh, select ones were pretty much standard selects. I didn't really have to do anything special for that because the select is kind of a fixed width uh, element and it wraps correctly, so no big deal. Uh, it was really these stretchy inputs where the, where the complexity came in. Um, back. <laughs> uh, what did I do? Um, okay, so so here are some of the challenges. First of all, um, this is just kind of a statement of how complex it started to get right off the bat. Uh, I was trying to use inputs. Uh, it turned out that inputs really don't do that word wrap thing well at all. Uh, so I ended up having to, to resort to content editable spans um, and then mirror the, the content from the span into the input uh, before submitting it. Um, so that's, that's kind of, I think my implementation actually, like each time you click a character, it like also like add, it adds it in two places. Uh, it copies it into like an invisible uh, input. Um, so that's pretty, that's pretty gnarly. And that's all just so that I can get get some input uh, that can wrap uh, in line. Uh, also swapping span. So, so that thing that it, that it does where like as you're typing at some point, uh, the typing, the, the text that you're typing in is gonna be longer than the label. Uh, and so the way that I'm handling that is that I actually have a, uh, an absolute content editable span. And then I have a relatively uh, positioned label until that content editable span becomes longer than the label and then I'm making the label absolute and the span uh, relative. And in order to know when to do that, I'm actually rendering that entire span in a detached DOM node off the screen and measuring how long it is so that I know when it's longer than the label. Uh, that is, that's pretty heavy processing for an input, but uh, I couldn't think of another way to do that. Um, so, and you can kind of see that it, it almost works perfectly. There's a little bit of a glitch there when I get to that boundary. It kind of juggle, jiggles a little bit. I had to also like fudge some like hard, hard coded uh, padding and stuff like that to like get them to line up. So I wasn't super satisfied with that. Um, and then this is kind of like the, the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Um, being able to get the wrapping of the, content, the text, to sort of work well with the label wrapping, uh, that turned out to be super finicky. So as I'm typing, uh, you can see that it's just kind of doing a weird thing where like initially it wraps pretty well here. Yeah, but then as I back up and, and use a word that's shorter, now it's like doing that thing where it's wrapping the, the label. And, and, I, and I had, again, some like magic numbers. Sometimes it would wrap too aggressively. Sometimes it wouldn't wrap aggressively enough. Uh, if it didn't wrap aggressively enough, I'd have like dangling label off the edge of the screen kind of. So that, that was really finicky and difficult for me to fix. Uh, and then finally, browser compatibility was just like kind of, you know, I, I was implementing it all using what I thought were compatible APIs, using like can I use or whatever to make sure that all that stuff would be backwards compatible and browser compatible. But I was doing it all in Chrome. And then when I started testing it in Safari, just like, I don't know what the heck was going on. <laughs> Safari just had very different sort of edge case behaviors and then also crashed. So uh, in my final implementation, which is the thing that I just showed you, if you try and visit that site with a Safari browser, it'll just show you that uh, older version of the Madlib form that, that well, the non-Madlib version of the form that's just regular inputs. So, um, you know, I believe that this is a valuable user experience paradigm. I think that it's something that more people can play with and try out. And I don't think it should be something where you have to like implement this whole thing from scratch. Certainly implementing a version of this that works just for your form is easier than trying to create a general library. But I think a general li library would be pretty nice. I mean, I think it would allow people to 
uh, pretty quickly experiment, A-B test a, a natural language or Madlib style form on their site. Um, and if it's like a React component or something like that, they should be able to drop in one of these sketchy inputs or whatever uh, component and, and be able to like, you know, submit those forms just like a regular form. Uh, so that's the dream that I have and I'm hoping that you all can help. Uh, so at Forms 3, we're willing to like back this up. Uh, Amazon gift certificate, 500 bucks. Uh, if it meets all those requirements and also meets the web accessibility guidelines, which I didn't try to do here for this little experiment, but uh, it's just things like making sure that the label uh, wraps the input and there's a couple other there's things on that link. Um, it should be on NPM. It, there should be a permissive, permissive open source uh, license, something that, that allows us at Forms Free to also be able to use it on our work. Um, and uh, we'll, you know, we'll write a blog post about it and we'll use your library uh, in the Forms Free uh, example library uh, for a Madlib style form and link back to your, uh, your GitHub project. Um, we'll only do this for one and you know, this isn't a contract and it's at our sole discretion, yada, yada. Um, and there's no time limit, you know, we're just kind of, uh, we're just interested in seeing people try and do this well and, and we're happy to talk to you about it along the way. So uh, if you decide to try to do this, um, you know, contact us, you can either hit us up at team at formsfree.io or just through our support line. Um, you know, make sure to mention that you're doing the Madlib form challenge and uh, <clears throat> Hopefully, uh, hopefully some folks will give this a shot. Uh, I'm really excited to see it. And of course, um, I didn't link it here. I will amend the presentation. I'm not sure if we can add a link to the presentation to this somehow, but I'll amend the presentation to include, um, to include a link back to our implementation so you can kind of see how we failed um, and hopefully avoid those pitfalls yourself. And that is that, um, he, that link to uh, Jurgen Rom's list of, of the uh, natural language forms, as he calls them, uh, is there along with the results from, uh, from the VAST study and also from the, the thing that Patrick McKenzie did. Um, that's it, thanks so much. <laughs> questions, can I answer any questions? So I know you said uh, you weren't trying to like meet the accessibility uh -huh. requirements in the first run, but I'm just wondering if you ran into any issues with like tabbing through those inputs where you were using spans, was that a problem? Or? Um, I can't honestly, like I actually implemented this probably like two months ago or something and I don't remember whether, uh, I, I think I made an effort to like set the tab preferences and, and I think it was, well, let's give it a shot. Can I tab? Will it blend? Um, let's see. Uh, can't actually see. Okay, so if I tab, yeah, so I'm tabbing through it. Tab seems to work. Right. Yeah. Can somebody implement this in like view or something different? Are you looking for React specifically for the contest? I would say React or a vanilla JS library um, would be what we were interested in, uh, just so that it's like available to be used kind of like with any front end code. Um, but I don't know, I'm just, I'm not super familiar with Vue. We haven't tried using it ourselves. Um, probably a, a, a vanilla JS implementation would be the most flexible one. I think we, we, ended, we did use React, but most of the, most of the JavaScript, which I can kind of, showcase here is pretty much like old school, uh, is pretty old school stuff. Um, yeah, you know, I'm doing like setting carrot precision, inserting carrots, um, you know, finding selection areas and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think to answer your question, JavaScript, vanilla JS or React. Okay, and while I have the mic, I have another question. Um, it, it's, it's, you just need like a developer package that people can, like a developer can then build a format. You don't need any kind of admin interface for some kind of like no, content. No, no, yeah. this, is, okay. this is just to like render the necessary HTML and JavaScript for the UX 
um, not for like processing the form. The form, like at the end of the day, when somebody clicks submit on the enclosing form, it ought to, it ought to be able to submit, you know, you should have that whatever the component is that handles the stretchy input should contain an input that when submitted, um, you know, delivers the data to the, to the endpoint. Great, thanks. Cool. All right, y'all. Thanks cool. so much. Thank you. Yeah.